summer is heating up and NVIDIA is pretty much unchallenged with their crop of releases now with the 700 series card because uh, as far as I know AMD is not planning on releasing anything for a while so uh, they've released a Titan, they have released a 780, 770 and surprisingly the prices are impressive as well. Of course the next in line would be the replacement for the 660 Ti. It is the GeForce GTX 760 and this one in particular is from MSI and part of their gaming line. See here has that uh, red color and of course features the twin frozer cooler and uh, of course I could just read the box to you but much better if I just open it up and uh, take a closer look inside and see what it actually is and uh, describe the features to you as I go along. Anyway let's dig in. The MSI GeForce GTX 760 that you see here uses the twin frozer cooling technology, hence the twin frozer name there. It also has the new streamlined packaging that MSI is using. You have the gaming line with the Dragon logo. Of course, if you bought the 660 tie or 660 from last year, you probably have the blue packaging, but they have now moved on to the red colored packaging, which is a lot more streamlined. They also have the yellow one for their Lightning series. And uh, open up the pack here. You have, uh, of course, a smaller compartment containing the card itself. You just pull that up. As usual, I'm just no, I'm not gonna read you the box since I'm gonna go over the tear down anyway. Main compartment here at the top. You have inside this uh, nifty looking MSI. Sort of envelope here you get an accessory including a two molex to a six pin adapter single one you get a driver disc that also contains the MSI afterburner utility and MSI combustor as well as the new MSI gaming app I'm gonna go over that with you in a separate video you have a quick users guide essentially a universal quick users guide this is now updated uh, their old one had that uh, sort of a orc looking monster guy that had that had been around for about uh, three years, five years. Now uh, this is a new one has, uh, they show you the light, now they still have the lightning series, yeah, apparently still have a hawk series, uh, although I haven't seen what their designs are for those, and of course the gaming series that you see here. And uh, make sure that nothing isn't left in there. There is of course that tiny one there hiding, yeah, and you have a VGA and the uh, uh, VGA adapter for your DVI port and put all these aside Make sure. oh lastly that one that fell out it's hiding back down there is a 6 pin to a to an 8 pin converter see there's a 6 pin female to a male 8 pin in case your power supply does not have an additional one of course uh, this means that the uh, GeForce GTX 760 and you see here it's probably using an 8 pin uh, connector now the standard GTX 760 actually has two 6 pins for the reference design but uh, they probably, uh, MSI probably puts in a a different uh, 8 pin connector in there let's see of course make sure nothing is left inside underneath no documentation and of course we have our video card there and let's proceed with Taking a look, closer look. Well, obviously, the card is inside an anti static protective bag. Just pull it out. Right. In terms of looks, it looks like uh, it looks a lot like the GTX 770 from MSI, part of the gaming series, with the same twin frozer cooler look. Now these fans of course have been updated. Uh, these look like they're 92 millimeter fans. So let me just verify. 90 or 92 millimeters. Uh, let me just check. They are indeed 92 millimeter fans. And they are upgraded from the, if you've seen the 660 Thai uh, series from MSI last year. They used 80 millimeter fans. And I noted that they cooled very well. But they were, uh, they produced more noise compared to their competitors. Uh, this one should be a lot quieter since it is louder. It's able to move more air same at uh, the same space and much more efficiently than 80 millimeter fans and also see the heat pipe there 
and a large heat pipe protruding right here in the connectors of course there might be a little bit of clearance issue there uh, but you're trying to kind of uh, pry open rather uh, reach the latch for the lock and then because of the heat pipe but of course it just takes a little bit of effort but it is definitely possible and yes indeed they use instead of two six pins they have an eight pin and a six pin connector hence the adapter uh, that does not necessarily mean that it will draw more power as of course uh, most likely it is just for overclocking purposes it allows you more headroom and allows you allows the car to draw more power and also here at the front you have the fin array open there so it can intake air from there and exhaust here at the rear and uh, you can see the row of uh, ventilation holes right there on top and as for the connectors of course you get a DVI pair of DVI connectors you have also a full size HDMI and a full size display port connector covered uh, has some protective covering there and more here on the side for uh, more connectors for the SLI bridge. Uh, let me just pull that up. Might be snug because it's uh, so fresh out of the box. Now, for those wondering if there is a clearance issue there, because of the uh, protrusion, that's actually part of the four in one heatsink. Let me just uh, try to grab an SLI connector here quickly. I don't have one there somewhere. Let me just uh, quickly there. Here we go. And uh, you notice that there are two SLI connectors for fingers, so that means it is possible to do a triple SLI or a quad SLI. And definitely. There is, of course, this is a flexible SLI cable. You'd notice that there is a little bit of uh, give in there. So it, it, is, um, it is possible, but you need a flexible SLI connector in order to plug it in and SLI. Now, as for the last covering here, of course, it is covering the PCIe 3.0 connector to attach the motherboard. And uh, just uh, note here, inside you get see some more of the heat pipes of course we're as I mentioned we'll go over that in detail once I open it up which I am going to do now let's take a closer look at the new twin frozer 4 uh, updated twin frozer 4 cooling solution from MSI of course before you open it up uh, just note that there is a warranty is void sticker right on the screw so uh, make sure that uh, I'm doing this only for academic purposes, of course, since I am reviewing it. But if you're at home, you don't want to avoid your uh, warranty. Needless to say, do not open it. All right, underneath, this is what it looks like. You can see the Foreman 1 heatsink in there. I'm going to put this aside for a bit and go over the twin frozer cooling with you. And uh, notice that this is actually, I uh, see it. See the dense aluminum fin arrays there, and slightly thinner than I expected. If you notice, they're, they're not very thick at all, especially compared to other cooling solutions. It essentially relies on that large heat pipe, or four large heat pipes there. Uh, these, this actually looks like an 8 millimeter heat pipe right here, and a 6 millimeter thick heat pipes right here, or 3. And they're not uh, in direct contact, but there is a uh, copper, co uh, copper plate right in between that. That is coated, uh, nickel coated, of course, to, to protect it. And uh, also, the fan is a PWM fan. Well, the pair of PWM fans, rather. And these use, of course, the new propeller design that uh, I believe MSI introduced with the Twin Frozer 4 uh, since last year. And these are much more efficient than the it's sort of a fragile looking fans you see in most uh, aftermarket coolers and uh, most custom coolers that are available from other manufacturers. I've noticed the, uh, the blades there sort of uh, are designed uh, with a little bit of notch in the end, of course, to deliver a lot more, uh, a lot more CFM. Uh, as I would say, at, uh, at a smaller space and uh, a much more quieter and much more efficient, uh, despite the uh, sort of the th thinner. Uh, aluminum fin array here compared to other heat sinks and it's also surprisingly lighter as well 
Now what I'm going to do now is of course remove the screws here at the back for the already void my warranty so I don't really care. I'm going to remove the 4 one heatsink and show you the PCB components. Alright, with the rest of the 4-in-1 heatsink removed, you can clearly see the PCB now and uh, notice that there is thermal tape in there just to cool the critical components with VRM area. You have a 5-phase uh, VRM there with, of course, uh, thermal tape for the memory chips as well. Although, curiously, um, let me just show you the back here. Uh, there are some memory chips in the back and they, they don't have any heatsinks on them. There's no backplate or anything. So uh, I'm just a little concerned in terms of uh, I want when whenever I want to memory overclock because there are some memory chips here in the front uh, that can be cooled with a heatsink, but in the back they're not serviced by any cooling solution at all. Uh, so you might want to be careful when you're overclocking your memory there. Uh, you want to overheat the memory in the back, uh, and also notice that they they use actually high quality capacitors, of course, with the with the that surpass the what the MSI calls the military class four standard. They use the ML. Uh, MIL 810 STD 810G standard and uh, surpass those you have high quality uh, solid capacitors here and also high C caps here in the rear uh, these are of course rated for 22 years under 85 degree Celsius temperatures and uh, these solid capacitors are rated for at least 10 years under 80 degrees Celsius load so that is uh, quite significant you will not be able to load it uh, that high unless of course you live in a really really bad uh, conditioned room and uh, of course also have uh, the core itself I haven't mentioned it yet but this is a GK104 core that is uh, different compared to the GTX 660 and GTX 660 tie it is actually uh, a lot closer to the GTX 660 OEM edition uh, it is a GK104 core with uh, one SMX disabled. Uh, it has less CUDA cores than GTX 660 tie, but it makes up for it by having a larger 256 bit uh, memory bus. And uh, of course, it has 2 gigabytes of memory, should be plenty enough for 1080p HD, and it will also be available in a 4 gigabyte variant. And uh, that's pretty much it for the breakdown here of the MSI GTX 760. Uh, video card this is a an OC edition video card it uh, the reference clock is around 980 megahertz to 1033 megahertz boost but the MSI GTX 760 OC that you see here actually is uh, 1022 and uh, I believe 1085 for the boost Alright, there you have it. As you can see in the benchmarks, that it definitely outperforms the GTX 660 tie and the GTX 660, and it is actually closer to GTX 670 in terms of performance. Now, uh, price-wise, the surprising thing is, much like the GTX uh, 770, it is priced lower than the, the predecessor uh, 660 tie. Introductory price was around 299, I believe, and this is uh, the GTX 760 from MSI is 259, only 10 dollars more than what the reference card is going for. So that is very good considering it has the twin frozer for cooling and it has a, of course, the twin frozer for cooling. I was very impressed. The fact that they moved on to a larger 92 millimeter fan is a lot quieter than 80 millimeter fan and also was able to cool down the uh, GPU even further down, uh, further down than I expected because it didn't have to throttle. Uh, when, even when I was overclocking it, I did not have to worry about temperatures at all when overclocking. Under Unigine it was like 68 and under 3D Mark uh, it was uh, at most it was like 72 degrees or 73 degrees under load. Uh, so that's not a problem at all. Uh, I didn't even have to adjust the power target. Uh, but in terms of uh, the results, of course very surprising with the plus 107 with the GPU offset. Very good uh, yields for overclocking. Now in terms of uh, bundle, uh, obviously the uh, it's, it is a, a GTX 760 uh, gaming edition. If you want a, uh, they also probably have a lightning edition of this card for those who are hardcore overclockers, uh, like uh, what MSI has done with their previous releases. But the, uh, it still has the for even if it's just the, the uh, gaming edition, it still has that twin frozer for cooling. It comes with 
the MSI gaming app that is useful for those who are non overclockers and for those advanced overclockers you get the MSI Afterburner. Now granted MSI Afterburner is free and has been free ever since it came out. You still have to mention that it is from uh, factoring the fact that it is from MSI and they have made it available. And even though it does not have any monetary value, uh, it is quite indispensable as an overclocking tool and I would say my favorite overclocking tool because it is quite light and easy to use and has a built-in uh, video capturing software. So uh, pretty much ticks all the box that are all I want from a monitoring or overclocking software. And yes, uh, from my experience, a lot less buggy compared to other uh, overclocking software out there from different manufacturers. Now I'm going to give this an Andrews Choice Award. It pretty much is a big improvement from the 660, 660 Ti, not just because of the GK104 uh, customized core, but also because of the implementation uh, that MSI has put in, the Twin Forza 4 updated cooling, uh, the, the, uh, also the Formula 1 heatsink, I love that. But my concern is the fact that the RAM that are placed at the back of the motherboard of the PCB uh, does not have any cooling on it, does not have any back plate, so that can be an issue when you're overclocking and terms of cooling. I tried to touch the uh, the memory chips and they were running definitely hot to the touch and uh, I would not recommend overclocking them without any additional heating on there. They, now, I was wondering why they have done that because uh, they are offering a 4 gigabyte variant of the uh, of this video card, so there's probably they're going to use the same PCB. Uh, so that's probably why they place the ramps like that. Alternating, uh, I'm not sure. I'm not an I'm not an engineer, so that's just my speculation. But other than that, uh, it still earns the editor's choice award for the improvements it has from the previous generation, and the fact that the MSI Twin Frozer 4 is a very very effective cooler, and it definitely delivers uh, for a very reasonable price of $259. So uh, that's pretty much a very good deal, especially in comparison to the 7950 AMD and also comparison to the existing 660 Ti, which will be phased out soon. And it comes really close to a GTX 670 uh, for a very affordable price of 259. So mainstream users and sort of entry level high end users will probably be going out to get this if they found that the GTX 770 is still with uh, outside of their price range. And uh, that's pretty much it. If you want to click on the link below to read the rest of the review just go to hightechlegion.com uh, subscribe for daily updates in our youtube channel go to our facebook to ask questions leave comments comments at uh, facebook.com slash reviews tweet at us at twitter.com slash hightechlegion and this is ron signing out